Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about all the soils, the amendments, the fertilizers, the liquid microbes, the liquid stuff we use in our irrigation system, and a whole lot more. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer so many questions that I get about this stuff and all the products that we use to grow our hemp here on the farm. Before we get into today's video guys, if you wouldn't mind, please hit that subscribe button if you are new here to the channel. And for those of you that have already subscribed, thank you so much. I really do appreciate the support. So folks, if you'd like to support our farm, go ahead and check out all the stuff in the description below. We have a website and uh, our farm thrives on the sale of hemp flour. So if you guys are interested in hemp flour, go ahead and check out all the information down in the description below. But today folks, today is really gonna focus in on what we use here on the farm. I get a lot of questions about soils, amendments, products that we use. And in no way do I endorse any of these products and none of these products endorse me. These are by choice, this is what I use. And I'm gonna to explain to you why I use them and why you're gonna see some changes for 2020 versus 2019. Um, I'm also gonna to try to edit this and so check out the description below where you can jump to what really fits your needs. If you're into soils, you know, I'll give you the minute where to jump to, and if you're into like the amendment stuff, I will try to make sure all that information is down in the description below so you can fast forward to that so you can get the information you're looking for. So let's not wait any longer. Let's jump over. Let me show you everything that we have to show you today, and let's get right into it. Okay, folks, so the first topic we're going to dive into is soils and how I use them. This is gonna be a really quick one because if you guys haven't checked out Soil Wars, I encourage you to. We did a whole spread of different soils and what the results were. So first, before we dive into any soils, I really do like fabric pots, guys. This is a smart pot. We use root pouches also, but I like the smart pots. They're built in the USA and uh, they're just really well built. So these are the pots that I like to use and you'll see down in the grow area, I am growing a couple of plants in smart pots. When it comes to soils, guys, again, check out Soil Wars if you guys wanna see the whole spread. But for here on the farm, the soils that we use are from coast of Maine. Uh, that doesn't mean that these guys are the best soils in the world. This is just what I like to use and I get great results from. It's also about locality. It's easy to access the coast of Maine soils here in Virginia, whereas Soil King, Bio 365, and a lot of other soils that I really enjoyed using during Soil Wars are just really hard to come by. And Coast of Maine makes a great product lineup that I can just stay consistent with my plants. But let's talk about the soils that I use to grow hemp. The first one is by far their best soil for hemp or cannabis. Uh, this is designed for cannabis up in Maine, uh, and that's the Stonington blend. This is a really good soil that did really well during soil wars. And if you're looking for a set it and forget it style soil, you just put this in a bag and start growing. Uh, they match it up with their own Stonington plant food, and we'll talk about that later. But it's really just two simple things, and you could you can grow it yourself. So they make it really easy. And the other combination that I had really good success with is their potting soil and their lobster compost. This on its own uh, does really, really well. I wouldn't recommend putting a plant directly into the compost, but this in general is so versatile. We're gonna actually talk about it a little later on in the video when it comes to amendments. Um, but you do a 50-50 mix with the potting soil, you're gonna get great results. So that's really a quick uh, cover of what soils we use here on the farm right now and what we'll probably be using going into the future. So let's jump into amendments because if you have soil and you're growing in the ground, really you don't need to worry about too many soils. You're worried about the soil that you're growing in and that is where lobster compost also comes in. This can also be a great way to add organic material, calcium, and a whole lot more. We ended up not doing lobster compost this year instead of lobster meal. Um, we did 80 pounds of lobster meal and they also sell it in the smaller bag. So if you guys are just doing a small area, this is great. And when it comes to amendments, when you're doing amendments for the soil, I love the Coast of Maine lineup. 
this whole lineup that we're going to get into in a little bit um, really just has a lot to offer. But lobster compost kind of like bridges the gap there between amendment and soil. So that's why I wanted to start off with this. Now let's talk about strictly amendments. Now these amendments that I'm talking about today can be used in compost tea or direct into ground. Uh, they have their own like recipe. <clears throat> I have my own recipe for using them in compost teas and they also have directions on the back uh, to make certain things, whether it's direct into ground, putting them with a plant, top dressing. Uh, so they do a really good job of describing how to use it on the back of these. Uh, number one recommended one is the lobster meal. And the only reason why I recommend this one is because it had great results in the veg um, and it has a lot of calcium. And a lot of people forget uh, that calcium is very important for the hemp and cannabis plants. <laughs> now, when you guys are talking about fertilizing ground, sometimes everybody just likes to put a general all-purpose fertilizer down. And then we'll jump to their Stonington blend. Again, this is what I use uh, in small areas, but it's also what I recharge a lot of my recycled soil with as a general all-purpose fertilizer. Um, it's a great, it's, it's just equal to most things you would see at a garden center when it comes to general purpose fertilizers. It's a 524, very, uh, very general, and uh, it's a great way to just give your ground a little extra boost. So now we're going to start talking about specific amendments for things that you're looking for, whether it's uh, phosphorus, whether it's potassium, or whether it's micronutrients. So that's where we're headed right now. now I'm going to start off with by far my favorite specific amendment, which is Coast of Maine's fish bone meal, buds and blooms. Now this has a ton of calcium, which we've already talked about with the lobster meal, but it also has a ton of phosphorus. And, and for those of you wondering what phosphorus does to the plant, phosphorus gives you more bud spots. So this is something I like to use for what I like to call pre-flower. When you know those plants are gonna be flowering in the next week or two, you definitely wanna start giving them this. Probably three to four weeks prior to flower. You can cut it all the way to one to two weeks, but you really wanna start using this probably for us here. It'll be in mid-July, you'll start seeing this come out. It's also great for tomatoes. Now these two are micronutrient boosters that I like to use in compost teas, not necessarily top dressing. I definitely recharge some of my recycled soil with these, uh, but these are very specific to using in my compost tea recipes. This is kelp meal, and we'll talk about kelp a little later on in this video also, but kelp meal is a great way to add micronutrients. Um, this is by far my favorite micronutrient to use, not only in the meal form, but in the liquid form. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but this is great. It doesn't have a lot of uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium. It's a 101, very basic, very low calcium, but these have a lot of micronutrients in it, which the plant also needs. Alfalfa meal, again, another micronutrient booster. It only has 1% calcium, it's a 202. It's got a little bit more kick than a kelp meal, um, but this is also something you will see in my compost tea recipes. By far, this is one of the more important ones for the compost tea recipe. It really gets that fermentation going. This is really good to use. Now, let's talk about uh, potassium for a minute here. We've talked about micronutrients, we've talked about phosphorus, and you won't see me touch too much on nitrogen because here on the farm this year, we are gonna stray away from a lot of nitrogen. Most of the stuff you see here is below six, six and below on the nitrogen number. Uh, the highest one is the lobster meal. So if you're looking for a lot of nitrogen, this is your friend. Um, but we're gonna start going into a lot less nitrogen uh, going forward here in the video. So just to let you know, if you guys are looking for nitrogen, this is what you want. So let's talk about potassium. This is something that I have researched so much 
and I was so excited to be able to work with these guys. I got in touch with them a few weeks back and I was just really, really into their product. I've done a lot of research and I can't wait to talk about it with you guys. <clears throat> now this is Cold Wool Organics and they call this one Angel's Touch. It's a 0 0.5017. This has 17 units of potassium. Now, why is potassium so important? It's so important for bud density, the health of the flowers, the strength of the stems to hold the flowers. Potassium is the hidden key to a very successful hemp grow. What I found last year was I was desperately trying to find ways to add potassium and it was just not happening. And towards the end of the season, I started to realize how important potassium was. You'll even go back into some of my videos and I say that it's not that important. Well, I've done a lot more research this winter because after finding out that nitrogen levels need to stay low in order to get that 0.3 and below number, that really, honestly, you can substitute a lot of the nitrogen for potassium and you're gonna end up with very, very healthy plants. Not saying that the plants don't need nitrogen, but they don't need as much as people give them. A lot of your bag soils have so much nitrogen in them that you can sometimes burn plants directly putting them in there. That's why you start, start with seeds, potting soil, and then probably a concentrated mix. This, you really can't burn the plants too, too bad, um, but this overall is very, very important, and I can't wait to use it. Now, this is water soluble, so you'll see this in our compost teas, and you will see this probably go into our irrigation system. And, that, and that's going to lead me to going into the liquids. Um, they also have a great lineup, and I really want to talk about this real quick. Cold War Organics has a great lineup. They are the only one that I have seen focused, specifically focused a lot of their amendments or um, products on potassium. Now this one is their general bud bread. Uh, I've seen a lot of good stuff with it. I only used it towards the latter half of the year last year, but the reason why I used it was because this was the highest potassium I had on my farm at the time, and this is an 8.4. Uh, so this is a general purpose uh, fertilizer or amendment, if you, however you want to use it. Um, it's a 5.4, 2.8, 8.4. It's also got calcium, magnesium, and uh, a whole bunch of other good stuff in here. So just to get you guys, um, you know, an idea of what we'll be using, this is something very new to our farm, and I'm really, really, really excited to use it. Now let's jump into the liquids. First thing we're gonna talk about is foliar spraying, something you will see me use a lot more this year than I did last year, um, but we used it quite a bit last year. Now we're talking about kelp again. This is Coast of Maine's liquid kelp. It's a 002. So unlike the meal, which is a 101, this has potassium. And this is also a great way to boost your plants in the summertime. Uh, when they get heat stressed, kelp is the number one answer to reverse them. Um, it is by far the best product I have used to foliar spray. Now Costa May makes a bunch of stuff to foliar spray. I didn't bring them out here today because this is the top product stuff that we're talking about. You may see me use their liquid squid, their liquid crab, they have liquid salmon, but this right here, liquid kelp, you will definitely see me use throughout the entire year. In fact, we're already planning on doing our first foliar spray coming up this week. And then something new that I haven't tried, but I am interested and in see how the results are this year, is the foliar spray from Microbe Life Hydro. Uh, they have a foliar spray. It's also a root dip. So this is for like plants that go into shock. I haven't used it yet. Didn't have any plants that went into shock. Um, very interested. This was kind of an opportunistic thing. We used a little bit of their product last year. Um, microbes don't do really well in our soil, I found out. so. 
I will be using microbe life and we're going to talk about microbes here in a second, but uh, we will be giving this a shot this year. So let's talk about microbes. I've tried a lot last year. In fact, I used two specifically quite a bit and towards the end I ended up using Mammoth Pea. Mammoth Pea isn't in here today uh, just because my experience with it was so minimal and I'm going to go this year with what I know. And so these two products are what we used the most of last year and I will probably end up using one more than the other and we'll talk about that in a second. So let's talk about Microbe Life Hydro. This is a microbe that you can add to the irrigation system. You can add it to your compost teas. It's a really good way to get those microbes going. The problem that we have here on our farm is we only have a very minimal amount of organic matter in our grow area. So it kind of doesn't make much of a difference. It does in a sense that when you're making the compost tea, it's getting that stuff in there. Um, but it's not necessarily doing a lot in the irrigation system. So you'll probably see us use this more for our compost teas than you will the irrigation system. The other one that we used quite a bit last year, this one was the one we used the most of. And I really kind of want to work with these guys again, and I'll be working on that this year. Um, and that's the fish shit. Now, this is not only organic matter itself, it's also a microbe. So this is a two for one deal. And for our grow area, we had the best results with this one. Um, it's a little on the expensive side for our farm and the results do speak for themselves, but we really wanna work with these guys again. We do have some, obviously, we will be using it this year. Now let's talk about strictly things that I will be using in our irrigation system. These products are by far built best for the irrigation system. Now, one of the two I use quite often in our uh, compost teas, and that's what we're gonna start with. These guys have been with us here, the channel, our Instagram, our farm, they have been so supportive. So I wanna give them a lot of love here. Uh, these guys have been great, and they've been with us the whole way, uh, from pretty much the start of our hemp journey to today. Um, and so I can't thank these guys enough. These guys were the OG supporters of our farm. And I really want to talk to you guys about their products. They also have a 15% off deal. Uh, that code is down below. It's code York River. And you'll get 15% off. I really encourage you guys to go and check these products out. Use the discount code. You guys won't be disappointed. We don't get any kickbacks from the dis uh, discount code. That is strictly for our viewers because these guys are so awesome and they just support what we're doing out here. So let's talk about my favorite one. One of the biggest comments I get when we sold our hemp flower is how well it smells. We don't have the hay smell. We cure it correctly, but the terpenes that are on our flowers are insane. They smell awesome. Even today, after you know six, seven months after harvest, they still smell amazing. And I really credit terpene booster from Craft Buds. I, there's a lot of stuff out there on the market, but I'm, let, me, let me tell you something. This stuff has got to work. I mean, the proof is in our flower. It smells awesome. It, I mean, you take it out of the bag and it just lights up the room with its terpenes. It is phenomenal stuff. This stuff right here, I will swear by. I put, put behind full faith that if you use this, the terpenes on your flowers, will smell incredible. One of the other things they make, and this is what I didn't use a ton of last year, but I will probably use a lot more this year in our irrigation, which is the humic acid and kelp. This is also something I will follow your spray. I'm probably gonna mix it in with the coast of Maine kelp and kind of give a good foliar spray to these plants. It's a, it's a micronutrient. There's nothing crazy about it. It's a 002, just like the liquid kelp from coast of Maine. So this is something that we will be using a little bit more this year. And like I said, we'll be foliar spraying a lot more this year than we did last year. And then finally, guys, I know this has been a long winded video, but finally, let's talk about the one product that I use to add organic matter 
to our grow area, but also add nutrients and give these plants a little something extra. That is Bucky Bloom liquid uh, cow manure. And this stuff I got my hands on towards the middle of summer last year. I used it in the irrigation system and was so happy with the results. This stuff works really, really well. They also have uh, pelletized cow manure that I use to actually recharge a lot of my potted soils around here. And by far, the results speak for themselves. Uh, the stuff is great. The liquid stuff is phenomenal. In fact, really, I just use um, the Bucky Bloom and the Craft Buds and usually a microbe in the irrigation system. And then everything else I kind of make compost teas with. Um, but these guys are great, and I, I encourage you guys to check them out if you're looking to add organic matter slowly, like we are, because you got to watch that nitrogen number. Um, this is a great way to do it. But folks, that is what I'm going to be using in 2020. Um, this isn't the entire spread. This is more of like what I really think works. We do have a lot of Coast of Maine's liquid formulas, and there's a ton of stuff that we used last year that is not returning for 2020. And that's because it either isn't accessible, it's too expensive, or the results didn't speak for themselves. And that's kind of why we've moved in this direction. And I'm sure some of these may not end up here next year, but this is what we're using this year. And a lot of these were proven last year, so I have a really good feeling we're gonna have great results. But that's all I have for today, folks. If you guys have questions, leave them in the comment section below. Send me an email, or you can find us on Facebook or Instagram. Hope you guys stay happy, healthy, and, and I will see you in another video.